Hello everyone and welcome back to my series where I'm showing you how you can take your watercolor paintings and turn them into seamless repeating patterns in Photoshop. So up until now what we've done is we've painted the motifs and we've removed the background and now we're at a point where we can touch up the motifs to make them look exactly how we want them to look before we go ahead and isolate them. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's jump right into it. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. First we're going to touch up the whole thing across the board and then we're going to do some individual touch-ups. What I mean by that is, for example, when I take a look at especially these green mushrooms, they feel a little bit out of place. The color is just like in a slightly different vibe, you know? It's not in the consistent color story that I was talking about in that first video. So there's some of these mushrooms I wanna to tone down just a little bit to match. But first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do color corrections across the whole board. The first thing that we can do to touch up all of these motifs at once is make sure that motifs layer is selected. And then what we can do is hit command U to open up the hue and saturation panel. That one I can always remember because U and hue sound a lot like each other. <laughs> so oftentimes what is the most useful is to start by playing with the saturation a little bit. So I'm just gonna scoot this over here so that I can see my painting. But I can just turn up the saturation just a little bit. Sometimes when you scan things in, they get dulled down. And there we go, if we bump up saturation, I really do like the way that that looks. Now, like I mentioned before, I do think that some of these mushrooms stand out a little bit too much, and that's no problem, it's something we're gonna play with. But it's helpful to do some of these changes across the board so that things maintain a pretty consistent look. So that amount of hue shift I like, I think that looks pretty good for mine. You can also play with things like the lightness, that'll make your paintings lighter or darker, but I don't wanna do that, so um, I'm happy with where it is. And that's it for the hue and saturation. That's all I'm gonna do with that one right now. That's just the easiest way to get that change kind of across the board. Hit OK to apply that change. Okay, so another adjustment layer we can do is to play with the levels. So if we hit Command L, that'll open up the levels panel. Now this will help us play with kind of the whites, blacks, and grays in our paintings. And so what I'll start with is I'll take on the right hand side here, I'll take this and just drag it in a little bit and that's going to increase the white colors. So you can see if we pull it in a lot, that's, that's a bit too much. But if we do just a little bit, I do like the way that looks, especially on the ferns. Now again, those mushrooms are looking a bit crazy, but that's okay, that's something we're going to fix later. Now similarly, I'll do something with the other side with that black side. See again, it'd be too much if we go too far in, but Sometimes just a little bit of a boost can be helpful. So I like the way that looks. Again, I'm looking a lot at this. <laughs> the flowers and the ferns, the mushrooms are weirding me out a little and that's okay. So click okay. The last adjustment that I sometimes play with is we can hit that command M to open up that curves panel again. We saw this earlier, but what we can do is if we if you click anywhere on this line, it'll, it'll change things. And there's a lot that you can really get into with this one. But basically what I'll do is I'll click about here and I'll just start dragging and play around with the curves to see if we go way up here we're gonna get way into the white way down here we're gonna get way into the black so you can just play with the curves a little bit to try and catch kind of a color balance that you enjoy that you like in this case, I'm actually just going to cancel this, and I like where it was before. So I hope you found that helpful. Now, in the very next video, I'm going to show you how you can isolate each of these motifs to really prepare them for your pattern making, and this is a very exciting step. And in that video, I'm also going to get into the last kind of touch-ups that you can do to any individual motifs that need a little bit of extra help. So stay tuned, because that video will be out very soon. But in the meantime, if you haven't seen all of the other videos in this series, I definitely recommend starting from number one, where I show you my best tips for painting your motifs and doing that with pattern making in mind. So with that, thank you very much, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!